Checking out Lucky Goat Reserva Red Blend 2015 out of Chile. The Colucha Valley. 60% uh, Merlot, 40% Malbec. Interesting blend, especially from Chile. You would have thought there may have been maybe Cab or Caminari in there. But there is none instead of they're using Merlot. Um, interesting to see how this will go. Um, six months aging in oak barrels. Uh, 20 year vine store, four to five years, they say. 2015, we're already on year two, still possibly has some good storage left. I will let you know what I think. Tasting notes aromas of ripe black fruits and cherries with hints of vanilla spice from the oak aging. On the palate, this wine is medium bodied with notes of Bing Cherry, Blackberry, and Strawberry Jam, accompanied by soft tannins and delicate spice. Imported by Saranti Imports, one of my favorite importers, as you all know. 13.5% by volume. This is a $10 wine. Uh, maybe even less, depending on where you get it. Maybe even a little bit more, I would say. The lows you might find this is eight, the highest is maybe twelve, but it's typically ten dollar bottle of wine. They also make um, a Cabernet. Um, they may make a Caminari, and I think they make a Sauvignon Blanc. They they make quite a bit, so um, I'm not really all sure offhand. Here is the wine. Um, since I'm not at my table that you've been seeing me at, obviously, the buddies are still in the picture. Um, I did take the uh, um, tendency to look at this earlier, and um, it is pretty transparent a, a little bit. You, you can see through it. It's not totally opaque. It is definitely a good red um red color to sort of a little bit of purple in the center. On the nose, the nose gives off this really huge sort of funky earth. Spice. Cherry, blackberry, a little bit of vanilla, strawberry, plums, a little bit of pepper. Maybe a light cigar box. But nothing's really too heavy. Nothing's really just overwhelming. It just is all really just nicely playing together. But there is definitely some earth on here that I, I'm surprised because I wouldn't expect that from Chile, maybe not necessarily. I don't know. Um, um, we'll see. Go ahead and try it. Hmm. Well, the wine's not harsh by any means. 
Well, hmm. please not first. It does have a, a little sharp bite a little bit afterwards, but still n nothing too overbearing. There is this nice, really vanilla spice that it adds on. Nice, really, those dark berries. You get that little bit of blackberry in there, a little bit of currant. Um, something maybe like you do get that this nice sort of cherryness. Um, maybe a slight little jam that it mentions. Um, not a huge jam, but maybe just a slight little jam. Tannins are pretty well structured. Um, they're not harsh, but they are in there a little bit. But definitely after that earthy nose, you are getting this sort of funk taste in the mouth. Not that it's bad per se. I'm not saying it's a terrible taste, but it definitely does leave you with this sort of earthy, Hmm. Musty taste. Um, which I will deduct. I'm going to deduct a full star for that. Um, maybe because um, maybe because it says the store for four to five years, and it's only in year two. Um, so maybe I'm drinking this a little bit young. Uh, so maybe this needs just a few more years to really bring out its full potential. Maybe it hasn't had enough time. Um, I mean, I still think it's good as it is. It's good, easy cooking wine. If you're not looking for anything special for dinner, just compare well with um, quite a lot of things. Um, the spice, I would think, could add to it being good with steak, burgers. The smooth, um, the smooth tannin structure, I think, could also um, add well to some um, very uh, less intense dishes. Maybe like a nice little chicken. Uh, probably definitely good with pasta. Huge, heavy. Um, maybe even good pizza drinking wine too. Um, um, so just real easy uh, everyday wine. Nothing special per se. No, nothing will be like, oh my gosh, God, you gotta try this Lucky Go 2015. <laughs> um, but uh, um, still a long finish, though. I will, I will play that. That it does have still a good finish. I'm still that the sort of funky, musty taste is sort of gone, and now it's left is really this nice, I would say, nice fruit core. Um, Probably like a, if you're just making like a nice fruit salad of like, of like dark fruits, like strawberries, blackberries, um, even cherries, if you're just kind of like taking a spoonful of that, it kind of just has this like nice little coat, uh, my catchphrase, dancing on a tongue, still in the very back, just kind of slowly dissipating out. So a nice lengthy finish. Um, I'm going to give this a four out of five. Um, I think, uh, you know, as I said, if you're just looking for an everyday wine, uh, nothing too special, or just looking for something, something easy to just like cook with, to really drink with, uh, anything, um, you know, 10 bucks, I mean, why not, you know, so we'll see where this goes in a few more years. Um, right now I, I'm content at four out of five, um. I know some people might think it's a little too stringent, um, a little too, a little too much. Being from Chile, um, and and hoping that this can uh, get better. All right, everyone. Well, I'm Ryan, a wine guy, and these are buddies. Go back and look. I eventually mention their names in a video or two. But until next time.
Cheers.